This is the number one podcast, whether you're looking to flip, wholesale, or buy rentals. Here at Future Flipper, we transform lives through real estate investing. And now, your host, Brian Davila. What's up, guys? It's your favorite real estate investor, Brian Davila. And today, we are interviewing someone very special. It is Ramon from Wholesale Sharks. How are you What's doing today, up, brother? What's up, Brian? Long time coming, man. Thank you for having me on. I know, man. I, I always tell people you're my favorite Instagram account to follow because <laughs> it is the most entertaining Instagram. I've seen you with monkeys. I've seen you in Paris. I've seen you in England. I've seen you across <laughs> the country. If you if you want some travel content, follow Ramon because this guy is traveling. It's ridiculous, the world. man. It's ridiculous, but I mean, it's uh, definitely a good story for the book. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So, I guess for for people who aren't too familiar with you, can you give like a quick background on yourself? Absolutely, man. Uh, I used to work for the man uh, a couple years back, um, and then I got fired, like a lot of people. Um, so, what's the first thing you do? You start selling English bulldogs to make a living, right? Like any other man out there. Uh, I'm just kidding. Normal people would just go and get another job. But for me, I saw a defenseless bulldog in my house that I had just bought my kids. And I was like, what's better parenting than selling my kids cute little puppy and make get them a little bit of life pain? So I was like, yeah, I'll go that route. So, I mean, it sounds horrible, but that's pretty much what happened. I had just given them an English bulldog for their birthday. And mm-hmm. as I got laid off, I'm like, okay, how much will it give me for that? You know, the first thing you do when you get laid mm-hmm. off, you start looking around your house. What do I sell? Like, what's going? Uh, okay. And the person that walked by me was an English bulldog puppy. I'm like, oh, yes. You'll probably give me a couple hundred <laughs> for this, I'm sure. Uh, long story short, I sold it. And my kids were heartbroken. Uh-huh. And I was like, I'll buy you guys another one. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> fast forward two years from there, I started selling English bulldogs for a living. Like, dude, I, I made a couple hundred bucks off of that one. I started wholesaling bulldogs. I started, uh-huh. you know, grabbing them from... Mexico and all it sounds horrible, uh, but I was reputable. You know, they were all good. It was all mm-hmm. up. And up. Uh, so I did that for two years, and then I landed on the news channel ten, channel three. Mm-hmm. English bulldog breeders selling bulldogs. The one dog got sick on a stupid lady. I took it to the park, and they they were coming after me. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, mm-hmm. time to pivot. So luckily, my brother mm-hmm. had a real estate license at the time. He was like, hey man, if you can make a living selling bulldogs. You could definitely probably make a living selling houses or doing something over here. I'm like, all right, I'll give it a try. Mm-hmm. Um, I sucked at real estate. I sucked. I didn't want to show houses. Like, I, I was horrible at opening doors. I was horrible at listings. So I ran into wholesaling. Um, and I love my car. I, I like this. Like, this makes sense for me. Like, I could add my fee on top of whatever, make, make a little bit more cash than I want. Um, so fast forward, you know, four or five years from there. Uh, our real estate company grows a little bit over six million dollars last year, so it's definitely been a Dang. little bit of a of an interesting situation to be a part of. That's crazy. Um, I guess like I want to get into you making the six million dollars, but what what year did you start real estate? Uh, it was like twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen. It's kind of when I was dipping my toes in there. And when did you start wholesaling? Uh, it was probably maybe like eight months after that, eight eight to ten months after that. I was okay. trying to open doors for people. They didn't want to buy any houses. I'm like, oh. dude, just pick one. Yes, yeah, so I was. Uh, dude, that's crazy. So it's been four years. <laughs> so you went from zero to six million in four years. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like we don't even believe it. Like I, I get to my house. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is, a, this is a joke. Like, well, come on. Somebody's playing a prank on me. Like, how, how do I go from that? <laughs> yeah. Like, struggling to pay the bills. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, I run into my two and a half million dollar mansion. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, like, let's go back to, like, the beginning, I guess. And then we'll get to the, you know, more advanced stuff. When you were first starting off wholesaling, I guess. How did you learn? Like, were you? What made you do wholesaling instead of like flipping or something else like yeah, that? Yeah, so um, it was interesting, man. Um, we had a little spot inside the mall for the normal real estate stuff. I'm like, we opened a little spot inside the mall and put 
real estate, whatever, you know, we'll get clients or, or something, which it never worked out. We never got a single customer. Um, but my brother mm -hmm. did a wholesale transaction by accident. Like he was going to buy this piece of land on top of a mountain somewhere. And he's going to, he's like, I'm going to build a house. So he started getting people reaching out to him when he was under, under contract that knew that he was under contract on that piece of land. And they were offering him like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more. They're like, okay, well, you got it for 30. We'll give you 50 if you let that piece of land go. He's like, well, how? Mm -hmm. I don't even own it. And they're like, well, it's fine. You'll just assign it. But we had no clue what the hell was going on. And so he's mm -hmm. like, sure. Yes, I'll take 20 get out of the way. So then ended up somebody else closed on it. And then we, he made like 20, 30 grand just without doing anything. And we're like, what the hell just happened? Like we sat down. You didn't even, you didn't even own it. You didn't even buy it, but you just made like 30 K on this. And so we, we started doing some research. What the hell? Oh, that's called a wholesale transaction. Wholesale. So we started mm -hmm. Googling and going into social media and we started learning more. Oh my God, I could just grab something and then try to sell it to somebody else. And so, mm -hmm. um, so then we, we, sw we shifted our, our, our signs out front to, we buy houses, you know, cash. Cause we're like, whoever brings us a house, mm -hmm. we'll try to give it to somebody else. Just like that one. And so Bandit nobody sign. stopped by, no customers. The only person that walks in is a wholesaler. Hey, I have houses, man. What's up? I'm like, oh, cool. Let's send me something. There were shit deals. We didn't even know how to analyze deals. But we had friends, Mexican friends, that would actually buy these to fix and flip and whatever. So they would send me one. I'd, I'd talk one of my buddies into buying. Hey, this one's good. Pay me like five grand if I find you something. And so we were making small little mm -hmm. five, ten grand. Just here, take this one. Just pay me like five grand. It's cool, kind of fees. So we were doing that for a while, mm -hmm. and then you know, word spread out, spread around that you know we had we had these like off market deals from the other real wholesaler. Then eventually we started asking mm -hmm. him, dude, how do you get them direct? Like, how do you get these con under contract? Then he started saying, well, I have some VAs. In my mind, I had no clue what the hell VA. I'm like veterans. You, you hired the veterans. Cool. Somebody's <laughs> hiring the old. Yeah. Woo, yes, yeah, the Army. thank you for your service. It turns out veter VA wasn't veteran. Like for normal people, you hear the word VA, a veteran. No, virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So then we just started emulating. Mm -hmm. He started giving us more tips, the more deals we were doing with him. And then eventually we started locking things up after we ran into some people. But it's definitely a struggle. Uh, unless you have systems in place, shitload of cold callers, mm -hmm. shitload of resources, income, and a lot of runway to withstand all the bullshit. It's really tough to become a wholesaler nowadays. Yeah, I think I remember when I first uh, I started off as a realtor like you. And then um, I got introduced to wholesaling. And I remember thinking like this is the first of all this is illegal. Second of all, like this doesn't work. Like why would anyone sell their house for less? And then I could like put a fee on top. It didn't make sense. Um, and then slowly I started to see some wholesalers making like serious yeah. money. Like I was used to realtors making like a hundred thousand, you know, Oh, 200,000. And I was meeting wholesalers making three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. And that's kind of what was my first glimpse of like, Oh, okay. You could make millions of dollars as a wholesaler or yeah. a flipper. Um, so it kind of sounds like that's kind of similar to your story. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the, the same way. I mean, honestly, I didn't start it because I wanted to make millions because I wanted it, the cars, you know, I started it because in my mind, I'm like, okay, all I need to live is 5,000 bucks. And the moment I sold a house to my friend, they gave me a $5,000 fee. That's all I asked for. I'm just giving me 5,000, bro. That's what I need to live. Like I'll pay my bills with three yeah. and I'll have two for restaurants mm -hmm. and movies. And so the moment I got that yeah. first 5,000, I'm like, Oh shit, I'll just do one of these a month. And I have 30 days to do whatever the hell I want. So immediately yep. the next week I made 15 on another deal and I'm like, Oh my God, I just made 20. Holy shit. Like two ways, 20 like that. I'm like, I was counting the months ahead that I had to live. I'm like, I have three more months to live. Yeah. I could do another one within three months and live some more. Yeah. And then it just kept on going mm -hmm. and going and going. And then, you know, that January after we started, cause we were like around like a, a year out. That January we did our first hundred thousand in a month, <laughs> and my brother didn't even know because I was I've been doing this all by myself from the beginning. So I go into my mm -hmm. brother's office. He's still the realtor hat. I'm like, bro, you have to come and see this. And I had my little Excel sheet with all the deals that I worked on that month. Uh, and I was like, look, dude, I just did a hundred thousand dollars. He was like, get the f 
out of here, man. What are you talking about? It's right there. It says 100000 He's like, all right, I'm quitting real estate. I'm just doing what you're doing. Okay, cool. Let's, let's go. And then he did. And then we just, he took over the dispo side and we kept it going from there. Fast forward. And now we like all these things happen. You know, we have company with employees and these things, but it all started like that. Just throwing mm-hmm. ourselves in there and figuring it out. That's super interesting. And like, I remember when I first started real estate in general, I've also had a very similar, I used to, I used to clean bars from 10 PM to 6 AM, like all night. Wow. Yeah. And, and I probably made like $10 an hour. I was making like 30,000 a Mm. year doing that. Um, and I remember, uh, someone told me they're in real estate and I had the same thought as you. I was like, all right, if I sell like one house, every other month I'll make the same of what I'm doing right yeah. now and I don't have to work at night. So let me just do this. Cool. But, um, okay. So let me ask you because your story is very unique because it seems like you you kind of got success faster than I think most people would you say that's wrong or right? Or what do you think? Um, I, I to scale to six figures in less than a year. That's what you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, six figures a month in one year, in one month, you did that within your first year. Yeah, probably around a little bit close to 12, 12 mark. Yeah, 12 month mark. Well, it started it, yeah. it started like this. First of all, I was, I'm very competitive. And my brother, when he was a real estate agent, like the first glimpse I got of real estate was him going to an award ceremony for his broker where he got a little pin because he did $100,000 a year and, and you know, for, for the year. And so I was like, Fuck, I want a pin. I want to pin for the hundred thousand a year, you know, but I wasn't making anything Mm -hmm. in real estate. So then I made a hundred thousand dollars in a month. I'm like, Hey, I can get Mm -hmm. a pin now. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, yeah. So that competitive story. Was that what was fueling you? That was fueling (laughs) me. I wanted to make a hundred thousand a year. And then when I looked up, I I actually did a hundred thousand a month. Uh, but don't get me, don't get me wrong. It's not as easy as it sounds. Like sometimes people might make it Mm -hmm. sound like, Oh my God, it's easy. Let me do it too. But you have to catch a wave. Like if you're on the wrong side of the fucking wave, you're going to get fucking slaughtered in real estate. Like anybody that's in mm-hmm. real estate right now knows that the fucking wave is going into the other direction. And now we're, we're trying to mm-hmm. get out of the fucking wave before it fucking swallows whole versus when the waves mm-hmm. are going all nice in our favor. We're all fucking just grabbing checks left and right battle of who posts yep. more checks on social media. But I guess, yep. you know, it's really 100%. what you do when the waves trying to swallow you versus when the waves helping you. Um, and I, I think that's just kind of where, where everything is right now, where, you know, you, you we're riding the, the wave and in, in, in a matter where we're just trying to, you know, ride it all the way until it gets good again. Yep. A hundred percent. I, I knew like during the last two years, cause, um, I, I try to get, get wisdom from my elders. So I remember when I first started, um, I would hear realtors and investors talk about, you know, I think it was 2007 when, you know, when the market was going up and realtors were selling houses like crazy, investors were buying houses, doing nothing to it, letting it appreciate and then reselling it six months later because there's just appreciation market going crazy. I knew in 2020, once they lowered the interest rates and then I saw things start to pick up, I knew I'm like, okay, this is, this is my wave. This is, This is my opportunity. So I took the last two years and I invested all of my money into flips. I was just buying houses, even tight deals, like the narrowest deals that I knew (laughs) in a regular market didn't work. I knew I was like, oh, this is going to work. And it worked for the last two years. And then in March, I also knew I was like, all right, that That was was the the wave. wave. Let me pull Pull back. back. And yeah. And like I'm down. I, I was used to carrying 10 to 15 flips at a time. Now I'm down to three. I'm losing on all three because I was, those were the, like the end of same, those tight you know, deals. Same here, same here, man. I got a house <laughs> a couple of months back for like 430, 430. And I'm like, I saw a comp. Mm-hmm. I, all you needed is one comp it, when it was, when the shit was good. You didn't need yeah. four or five, just one fucking comp. Yeah. So I was like, not even one. I have something in the coming <laughs> soon or pending. Uh, yeah. So I saw him for yeah. 520 right behind it. I'm like, I'm good. 430 uh-huh. is 
comp at 520, I'll fix it with like 20. So I sold it to myself, one LC to my other LC mm. for like 470. And I got a huge lump sum up front. I'm like, I'll just pay myself up front and then I'll, I'll just sell it and break mm-hmm. even at the end when I already got paid in advance. And then when I yeah. do fucking list it, the fucking market turned. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants anything anymore. Like, oh my, and the appraisal, yeah. started, like they appraised it at 470. I'm like, this is horrible. Oof. So now I'm stuck with this. <laughs> I had to rent it. I rented it out. I'm like, I'll just rent it until something changes. You don't want to take the loss? No, fuck that. I'm taking a loss. I just rented it out. I'd rather pay like 1500 out of my own pocket until shit shifts or until I, I say, let me just refi it. Because now they want like $100,000 to refi that property. So I'm like, oh, oh yeah. put 100 in it and just leave it sitting? Or do I just pay? A, yeah. I'll rent it. I'll pay like a grand each month, you know. And then I'll yeah. see what happens. I mean, uh, I don't yeah. want to commit 100k yeah. into something right now. Like no, no thanks. Yeah, yeah, I know. I so I have one. I have three. Two of them are in escrow right now, Ooh. and I'm like, Lucky. thank God. One of them, yeah, one of them. Like I'm just getting ridiculous offers, and like also when the market change, now you start to see like the realtors that don't do any deals because you know they just get lucky. So I'm dealing with these agents who uh. are just. Terrible. This lady, this lady wrote a 21 day home inspection contingency. And I'm like, lady, like, (laughs) yeah, but it's your only offer. So you're kind of (laughs) like, so you got to do what you got to do, you know, but, but all right, let's talk about the market. Let's talk about the market shifting. So you did 6 million last year, you know, are you going to be able to do it again this year, or is it going to Fuck be different no. now because of the new market? Yeah, shit this year, man. There you Come go. On, now Keep it real. Was, was yeah, insane. Um, this year, we'll be lucky if we hit a million. I think, man. I mean, yeah, really? no cap, no cap. Like shit shifted like crazy. Because last year we're buying, dude. We're buying like 10, 12 houses a month, like for ourselves. So yeah, there's a shitload of revenue that came in from flips. You know, a couple of million from flips, and then the other couple of millions from. Uh, from wholesale and then a couple million from like Dispo. So it all kind of just added into the big thing. But yeah. this year, like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to... I just bought like seven or eight houses and I, I, I refied a couple, left them as Airbnbs, rented one. Mm-hmm. I'm still figuring out some other mm-hmm. shit with But the way we see it right now, we ain't, we ain't doing anything just because the rates are so horrible. The rates, like a rate as an mm-hmm. investor, investment only, uh, statement only, Loans are like at eight point something right now for invest- eight. Who are, who eight, are you eight using? Point something. Some some horrible people that are very <laughs> easy to work with. Some horrible people that are very easy to work with. Like they'll get my shit. Refined. Have you like, worked with some of the bigger people? I haven't really. Loved. Like the, like, have you tried a uh, lending home? I'll, I'll look into it once I finish the whole portfolio of things. I just want to get it in and out. Refi two thousand dollar payment. Sure, I'll put a renter in for like twenty seven hundred bucks. You know, get them all in there, and then I'll go and do like a portfolio mm. refi or something. Um, so, so right yeah. now, I'm just it's like the speed speed game because I have so much shit going on. Yeah, but but yeah, man, the market definitely shifted. You you're seeing that left and right. A lot of alliances broke. A lot of people that partner up with other people broke. A lot of companies broke up. Like people are doing their own thing. Um, so you're starting to see it right away. And we called this two months ago. Here comes the purge. Watch out! Here comes the fucking purge. Like we yeah. Started, yeah like saying it right away as soon as we saw it. So, but it's also exciting. It's also exciting because nobody wants a game that's just fucking easy. Like it was so easy for me at one point, dude, that I was depressed. Like that's how easy this, this game was. I was at my house depressed out of my fucking, like, dude, I had to drink like to get undepressed because that's how easy Mm -hmm. life got. It was, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I knew because like I said, I kind of, I, I've see, like, and when I first started in 2015, we had a little, uh, blip of them. Uh, no, it was 2018 where they raised interest rates and I saw the market drop like instantly. So I knew I was like, this is temporary. So I, even though there was times where I didn't want to work hard or there was times where I was just like, dude, I'm so tired of flipping houses. Like I get no yeah. fulfillment. But I, I knew I was like, I just got to yeah. ride this wave because I know it's if if we had five years of that, 
bro, we'd be <laughs> hundred millionaires, but I knew it was a short time. Um, so now what's the move? What, what, what do you think is the next move for the next two years? Um, yeah, I think the next move for the next two years is dude, uh, we're, we're growing our acquisition side. We're growing our acquisition side because now you can't depend on deals from other people mm. that much. You have to be able to get them deeper. So we're growing that side. You know, we're throwing money at that. Um, You're more direct, more direct to seller. seller stuff for sure. Uh, Dispo side, mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many deals out there. The, the While the rates are high as fuck and investors can't really refi out, um, and lenders can't refi people out, the payments are too high. That's slowing the shit out of the Dispo side part anyways because mm -hmm. people were selling homes to investors and, and buyers with the promise that they'd be able to refi them out into a decent payment. Mm -hmm. And now they can't afford a mm -hmm. payment. You know, like they, payments went from like mm -hmm. 1400 to like 3000 Two thousand twenty five hundred. So people can't. So so that definitely put a, a stop on that. But I think it's just optimizing, man. You have to optimize your business. You have to lean up. Uh, you can't just. Sometimes you play defense. Sometimes sometimes you play offense. We've been playing offense mm -hmm. hard. Like we've been going hiring, 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 hiring like crazy. Yeah. Uh, so now it's just time to play mm -hmm. a little defense. You know, look within your company, see who you really need. See who is extra. Yeah. Like you have to look at all that, man. Uh, unfortunately, that just how business is. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you don't play business right, then you're going to be uh, the unemployed line looking for somebody else to hire you versus you doing the hiring. So it's just the, just the name of the game, mm -hmm. man. Um, and the writing's on the wall. You know, when you go 10, 12 deals, 10, 12 days with no fucking deals, I mean, your business is telling you something. Oh shit! You know, and then it's your turn to say, okay, well, what do I do? What do I optimize? It's not always about making mm -hmm. money. It's also about saving money. Right? Like I could, I could make 10,000 yeah. extra, but what if I save 20,000, you know, like you have to, and that's mm -hmm. the cool part. You optimize, you see yep. what's truly valuable. You see what's not, what's extra you lean, lean up, you know, yeah. uh, you ninja up. And then when things pick up, it's all fucking productivity and, you know, just fucking hustlers in your company. Mm, yeah. I think that's huge. I think, um, I actually stopped all my marketing and I forgot and like may or something like that because it was just like we were just having such a hard time disposing deals where i was like dude we're spending ten thousand dollars a month let's yeah. just pause like we'll, we'll get everyone back let's just wait and see where these numbers are gonna fall because like right now with houses that were 750 they're selling for like 725 sometimes 700 so i need to see what's the yep. new arv yep you know, before I start going aggressive, buying and trying to dispo, because I felt like I, I I had deals that I had. I remember the very first deal was in Big Bear. I think comps were six fifty. I had it at like let's just say four hundred, just for example. I sent it out at five hundred. I'm like, all right, oh. it's gonna sell nothing. I was like, all right, let's lower it for seventy five, and you know, just kept lowering, lowering, lowering. I ended up selling it, for making like twenty five hundred bucks. Oh, so that's that was when I was like, all right, like everyone's starting to pull back, but that's California because yeah. I'm talking to other people in like North Carolina, Texas, Florida, who are Ohio, who are not seeing the same effect. But you're in yeah. Arizona, so I know Cali. Nevada and Arizona, those are kind of similar yeah. markets. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, so I guess let's, let's go into the, the direct to seller methods that you're going to use. Like what kind of marketing are you going to do? So to get we're these working deals? with some SEO people for our uh, website. So we're starting to rank up a mm -hmm. little bit better. Even in the first, first couple of months, mm -hmm. we started seeing a lot of more traffic to our site, which is great. So we're kind of working on that. It's always it's always been kind of like I've always been curious on that side, and we've never really gotten it to where we wanted it. But now you know we we're starting to get to a good good spot there. Uh, we have cold callers. You know we have ten cold callers right now. Uh, we have mm -hmm. we're just recycling the same list over and over. We really haven't added anything new just because we skipped all Maricopa at one point. Uh, so we have that. We have yeah. Facebook ads. Ads are always running. We never turn that off. It's always just like an automatic, you know, five to ten thousand dollar budget mm -hmm. every month, and it just keeps going. And that pays for itself. One, one or two deals here and there, you know, definitely always keeps it going. Mm -hmm. um, and just word of mouth as well, um, you know, tell letting the people know what we do, relatives, friends. We'll get we'll get stuff from there all the time. 
Um, but that's that's pretty much it. We don't really do postcards. We don't do bandit signs. Those are just the things that are running on their mm-hmm. own. We have one acquisitions person right now. Uh, I also help mm-hmm. here and there. Um, but but yeah, that's just kind of where, mm-hmm. where we're at with the with that side. Got it. Okay, that's your direct to seller side. And I know, like, I thought. Um, that six million dollars that you made last year, I thought a lot of it was from dispositions. It was a. It Are was you guys a bit still of, doing a lot on dispositions? Amount, but I would say that we were maybe fifty fifty acquisitions and dispositions. Just because I mean, we were locking up yeah. direct to seller deals where we would make a hundred, hundred and fifty in some instances. Um, so we we yeah. got into a good amount of those, like maybe one a month, where we would just do do that. Plus all the other flips, this and that. I mean. It was definitely some good traction mm. on that as well while it was going. So it was good to, to see. Yeah. But you're, you're right, though, about about uh, being in the field because then you know what the new ARVs are. Like we bought a prop- we offered a mm-hmm. property 270, uh, be right one week off from when the shit went down. And then the, the following week, because mm-hmm. they didn't accept the offer, the following week when they called us back, there we were like, well, yesterday's prize ain't today's prize. <laughs> so we had to get it for like 250 now. <laughs> And then we sold yeah. it for two seventy. Yeah, because nobody was yeah, picking it up. Exactly, nobody's going to pick it up at two ninety anymore because things shifted so quickly. And even now, I don't think we could sell that property for two seventy right now. No, uh, well, maybe then, I don't uh, know, but I don't no, know. Just because the buyers that we sold it to, now they're they they're, they closed down their their buying box and they're also just waiting and sitting. Oh really? So it was yeah. like right at the end. Yeah. So I I would talk to people about you. So. I see you as like the disposition king because you made three million dollars last year just on dispositions. So how do you get better at wholesaling properties on the disposition side? On uh, the dispo side, I mean, it all goes hand in hand, man. I mean, I wish I could say, oh, we have a special formula. Uh, I mean, we were very connected with the Hispanic community, Hispanic lenders, a lot of the Hispanic hustlers that don't know the mainstream wholesaling community so that was kind of our plug where we'd just be feeding all these local uh and you know wholesalers that didn't know about the mainstream wholesalers so we got in pretty good that way so that we were just moving shit that nobody could move because they had their own connection of buyers and buyers so they would add their fee and we're just supplying that market we weren't necessarily kind of can you kind of go into that more i kind of i didn't i didn't get yeah so what do you mean mainstream? So, like, so there's two types, of, two types of people. Those people that know all of the wholesalers, like us, you know, that are out there in social mm-hmm. media and this and that. And there's a sub community mm-hmm. uh, of wholesalers that don't know anybody, and they're just out there in the swap meet. Yeah, they're out there giving the little cards out. They work with the actual people with lenders and realtors, and those that's the plug for them. But they don't really know this other world mm-hmm. where we're on social media, and so we got pretty well connected mm-hmm. with them. The ones that have the mom and pops mm-hmm. and the swap meet looking for a house that didn't get qualified yeah. and now they have sixty thousand to play with, and now they use one of their friends mm-hmm. that's a local Mexican person, you know, and so we we're the ones that got connected with them, and so a lot of times we move deals that nobody could move because we had these relationships in place, and it wasn't I can't say it was hundreds, it was only like a handful of people, you know, five, ten people that we were very well connected with, and they were doing you know ten, fifteen deals a month with each. Yes. So I understand networking. I understand, you know, you were networking with people who are not like the gurus on social media and, and getting real life relationships. But like, where do you find all your buyers? Cause I'm pretty sure those buyers aren't buying everything. Yeah. Um, I know we were using prop stream quite a bit as well. I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward when you use like things like that, like prop stream, you know, we put in a zip code really? of where we had the property. We download, you know, couple thousand cash but recent cash buyers from zip code and then we blast that list and see if anything came from that uh just the basic practices i mean but also you know reaching out with title title's been very crucial uh reach out to title hey there's these deals connect with anyone you can you know a couple of good relationships from title made us a couple hundred thousand dollars just by knowing some more people i mean they're the ones that work with everyone you want to get well connected go to a title company they're literally doing the deals for everyone have you met this guy? No. Oh, nice to meet you. Have you met that guy? We'll introduce you to every single person. Yeah. That's a huge gem. I think I think there's I think there's two types of people, right? There's the social media crowd, which 
like me and you are kind of part of where you post on social media, everyone kind of knows you. And then there's the crowd where no one knows them, but they're still doing deals, but they have great relationships. They're closers. And I think what you're talking about is just kind of blending yeah, both. It's a, it's a blend. I, it's a blend of both. I think you find a rhythm eventually too. You know, find a rhythm mm-hmm. of what's working, a good mixture of, you know, show the business, show the life, show, show, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit of comedy and you mix it into your own batch of whatever works over a couple of years of just trialing and erroring. And now you have your rhythm. I mean, if you, when you see my stuff, it's usually some, some funny shit, some family moments, you know, I just hear just normal guy, your family stuff. And then you have some business stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. walking into the company guys. Blah, blah, blah. So you find your formula mm-hmm. of work, what works for you. And then now you're your own episode, you're your own show. Let me watch the Ramon show. What's going on? Oh shit. He ate some gross ass mm-hmm. fucking wings yesterday. Oh, cool. <laughs> Damn, yeah. I'm not going there. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, I guess it's just fine. Yeah. That's what I realized, like, recently. Like, we're all a channel. You know, like, and then you got to ask 100%. yourself, would I watch my own channel? Dude, I'm, I'm up at night watching my own shit. I'm, like, just fucking replaying some shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Like, if it makes you laugh, <laughs> dumb shit that you do, like, okay, you got something. <clears throat> yeah. I think uh, I would, like, sit there and watch your show, and I think... I need to think about that. Would I watch my own stuff? So I, that, that no, was yeah, a huge sometimes I go back right and I erase some things. Sometimes it weak. And then, I mean, it, you know, we all do it. We all look at how many views we got, right? Like, and then you analyze mm-hmm. what happened. Why am I at a fucking thousand views right now? You know, and then all of a sudden you're like at 1700 views. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, why, like 1700, like it grew. And then you're like at 800 fucking views. Like, what is it? What is it that I did that fucking make that, you know, vary? And then, and then you got to digest it. Like, what is it? What's the formula? You know, what, what is, what's your sauce? Mm-hmm. What's working for you? I mean, you got a shitload of support, a lot of followers. There's something that you're doing, mm-hmm. obviously some sort of value that you're bringing that's keeping people around. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think for me, like we'll talk about social media. So for me, um, I knew when I first started, I was like, I know I'm going to suck, but I'm still going to post. Like I, I know what I'm doing is not the end product, but I'm going to trial air, post, see what people like, see what people don't like. And then this year I, I invested. So just like I was investing in, uh, direct to seller, uh, marketing. Now I'm doing, I'm investing in my social media. I spent thousands of dollars a month on my Instagram. I I just spent $10,000 for new, uh, video equipment, a new camera, new lenses, lights, all this stuff, because, uh, I'm going to take social media to the next level. I think I'm going to grow like, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm at like 50,000 new followers, oh, real yeah. followers this year. Yeah. So I'm going to try to get to like a hundred uh-huh. to 200 in the next 12 months because I'm going to, I'm first of all, I'm going to invest in the equipment. So now I don't need to outsource. Now the equipment's mine. I'm going to just uh, contract people to come in and use my equipment. And second, I'm going to hire people who are going to be here working on it full time. So instead of an assistant, I'm going to hire like a full time social media person. I think that's going to be the move. I think that's the oh, next yeah. wave, especially on Instagram. I'm putting, I'm giving you guys Woo. the game right now. I think, I think Instagram is going to take over as the biggest platform right now. Yeah. It's TikTok. I think Instagram's oh, going to yeah. take it over because of the, the real yeah. adjustments and it's cleaner than TikTok. Yeah, TikTok is just the wild, wild west right now, man. And plus, owned by china yeah like dude they're gonna shut that shit down yeah. any fucking minute like come on now yep who the that, what, what's going on in china right now they got some beef they'll push a fucking button and all your fucking tiktoks are gone <laughs> yep or all your or all your your information and your phone is gone or or something's i think i think yeah. if uh we we get a republican president i could see them oh, shutting sure. tiktok down and then all those people who were oh, investing yeah. time into that yeah. platform only are going to be like, damn. I, so I think Instagram's going to blow up. So that's why I, that's what I'm doing. That's my wave right now is social media and just branding because like, I don't want to be limited to just oh. real estate. If you have a brand, if Ramon grows a brand that's outside of real estate, it just Ramon the brand. If another opportunity comes, doesn't matter what it is. If you believe in it and it works and your followers trust you, that's a, instantly a multi-million dollar company. Absolutely. If you grow the, the Absolutely. brand, and and of course, you know, 
people think about that, but people got to make sure, just kind of like a disclaimer, they got to make sure that they also have that security, financial backing of something that's working. Because, I mean, you could go mm -hmm. full full blast into this other space, but it takes some fucking investment. Like you're saying, you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Like somebody might want to try, but mm -hmm. unless you have something sure or something solid in terms of like a financial yeah. backing and runway, like you're going to run out of cash quick yeah. trying to fucking do what other people are doing. Yeah, that's true. So like, I obviously, I still have my real estate business. I uh, still do future flipper. So that's why I could invest all this money. Um, but I still think even if you don't have any money, you know, the, the, the camera on these phones are just are good enough to, to film content, yep. put yourself out there and start. Cause I, I didn't invest into cameras until a year and a half of posting with just my phone. Absolutely. So absolutely now. Yeah. There's, there's so yeah. many things that could be done, but at least just people could start for the time being while, while they decide if they want to invest or not. And then, mm. and then you get practice. I guess, like, you get practice, right? Like the first, I still remember the first fucking video I did was of me standing in front of the house, like after I supposedly ran up the mountain. Like I still remember that one video. Sure, blah blah blah. Uh -huh. And I sounded, I, I didn't like it at all, and it felt so uncomfortable. No microphone, yeah. but you just have to start. You're not gonna like your voice. You're not gonna like yourself because you're not used to yourself. Yep. Mm hmm. I remember. It's funny you brought that up because I remember when I heard my voice for the first time, I was like, dude, oh my God, like I sound terrible. Like I sound like horrible. We all and sound now horrible. I just hear my voice. We all sound horrible yeah, for ourselves. Yeah. Like, first time I heard my voice, yeah, I'm like, yeah. holy shit, I sound like a fucking squirrel. Yeah. Or have you ever, se I've seen a video of myself and then I look at my wife, I'm like, how could you like me? Like, you like this shit right here? Into? Like, this is what does it Yeah. Like, yeah like what's wrong yeah, with you? but <laughs> but then there's other times where i look at myself in the mirror and i'm like I gotta go now. i'm a good look I gotta go yeah today. but then video I gotta go on today. yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it depends on the yep. day but um all right so some more things i want to touch on uh two two things one you have a lambo what's that like dude uh, the lambo is like the greatest thing that has ever happened to me <laughs> in my life. Like, dude, I forget. Sometimes I forget everything. You know, you, you forget you're still the same guy. The only way you remember is like by seeing your surroundings. Otherwise, you're still the same guy that came from nothing, you know? So like sometimes I'll be having a bad mm -hmm. day, but nothing beats having a bad day inside of a fucking Lambo. <laughs> like, dude, you may, I, I'm driving my fucking Lambo worried as fuck. Because ugh, hundreds of thousands of fucking dollars. And I look around mm -hmm. and I, oh shit, I'm in a lab. Okay, cool. It's not, it's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could be yeah. fucking worse. I don't have a. Did you, how did you buy it? Did you buy it cash? No, nah, man. Um, I financed it. One of my buddies bought a Lambo, mm -hmm. Jesse from uh, Batch. Uh -huh. And he's like, hey, bro, you got to yeah. finance this through your business. I'm like, all right, cool. Give me the contact. He plugged me up with, plugged me with this guy. I gave like a hundred K down, you know, and mm -hmm. there you go. Payments aren't that bad. Like people think Lambo, oh, so fucking expensive. You give like a hundred down on a Lambo, your payments are like a couple of grand a month, dude. It's not, it's not bad. Like I thought my insurance like two grand? was going to be horrible. My insurance is like 500 bucks for six cars, including my fucking really? Lambo. I bought my dad a truck. Damn. I bought him another free car. The other cars I got my for my daughter, like I pay like five six hundred bucks for all six cars, including the Lambo. I thought it was gonna be like a thousand for That's just crazy. the Lambo. It's, it's all cap. Well, it might be depending on your driving record, I guess. But I, I was pretty happy. Yeah, I'm like, a couple of grand for for that experience, dude. Yeah, I, I can sell it right now. The guy from the dealer calls me. He's like, "Hey man, if you don't want it, I have people that will buy it." I'm like, "Bet you will." I ain't fucking getting rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Like what? Do you think getting a Lambo was life changing? I know some people are going to listen to this and be like, oh, this is so stupid. But I think that, you know, sometimes the material things could be life changing. So was getting a Lambo life changing? Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Because you have an image of what success is, right? And success isn't money. Like when you start out, you don't see all the money in the bank. Success is whatever you see in front of your face. So for me, success was a mansion. And a Lamborghini in the front 
and he's standing in front of the fucking light. That was my vision of success. Even if I could afford it or could not afford it, that's what it looked like, right? When you got there. And mm-hmm. so I bought the house and then oh, something's missing. Something's missing. And my wife would always uh, Photoshop a little Lambo in front of the house just to kind of poke at me. You know, like she would always put a little Lambo in mm-hmm. front of it. And I'm like, oh, I know someday, someday. Boom. Like I locked up a deal. I made like a hundred K just out of nowhere. We sold it like 30 days. Blah, blah. There's a hundred lane extra that I didn't even accounted for. And so I was like, mm. I didn't even test drive the Lambo. First of all, and I've never rented a Lambo, but I said, I'm going to go buy a fucking Lambo. The first Lambo that I see, I'm just going to get in it, say, here's the shit and leave. So I, I called the guy, the finance guy, I have a hundred. Let's do, what do we do? Boom, go get it. And so I just went over and just pointed at the first one. I said, write it up. Let's fucking go. And it was done. Dang. It was a good feeling. Was Do you have any smartest? regrets or you're so happy? Dude, I'm happy as fuck, dude. Cause like, there's nothing worse than having regrets. And one of the regrets is not doing what you want, right? Like time's going to pass. We're going to get old. We're not going to be able to get up and our backs are going to hurt. I'm not going to be able to get into the fucking Lambo later. Just cause it's so fucking low. And then you're going to regret. I should have gotten it when I wanted it versus when I could do it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Whether, whether, whether you can or you can, if it's something that just happens organically, just roll with it, man. Roll and adjust. Life's like, life's like a boxing match. I always say it. Sometimes you punch. Sometimes you get punched. You duck. But you always have to be fucking dancing. And if that's part of what your journey looks like, then go for it. Like, yeah, everybody's going to have an opinion. But not everybody has a fucking Lambo. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Quote of the year right here, baby. Quote of the year. <laughs> All right. So, uh... Last topics I wanted to touch on before I let you go. So I wanted to have you on because not because you made $6 million. I had no idea idea either, but because, (laughs) (laughs) but because of the lifestyle that you live. So, like I said, I watch you on Instagram, you travel, it seems like weekly, biweekly or minimum monthly. You're always with your wife and kids. You're, you're living life. You're not a slave to your business. It it seems like you're living life the right way. Can you talk about your lifestyle? Um, yeah, well, I've always felt like I could travel into the past. Like, And hear me out. I'm not crazy. Uh, this is how I live my life. Right now, this is the past. I don't, I don't live in the present. Like, th- We're living in the past. And if you look around and you see your children playing, you're actually time traveling into the past right now, this very moment. You walk into your living room, you see your kids playing, you're not in the present, you're in the fucking past right now, because this thing's gonna is gonna pass, right? So if you if you live your life like that and you change life right now as if you're creating the actual past of what happened, then you're gonna change your whole life like that. And for me, my past, I it's like I got a second chance to go to the past and fix everything, right? So my past, I want them to have, mm-hmm. you know, flights, I want to have vacations, I want them to have the car at their like if you could let's say like my daughter, she turned fifteen. Um, her dream was always to have a car, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's say I wasn't able to do that. Right. And my life took a different turn and I was broke and I couldn't even do the party. Let's say I was able to go back into the past. All of a sudden she got a crazy giant party. What, what does that past would look like if I could go back and change it? Well, exactly what I did. That's how the past should look like if I could go back and do something about it. So I'm always here in the mm-hmm. present, changing, changing the past. If, if it makes some sort of sense. So like, no, the you lost me. We- Let's just start over. Let's, <laughs> let's start over. Let's start over. You lost me. You lost me. How do you live in the past? Like, give me, give me, like, okay. All. Let's just say yeah. your next vacation, or I don't know. Explain to me, how do you live in the past? If you look back at your life ten years ago, and you could go mm-hmm. back, you okay. probably change some things, right? Twenty-one. Okay. Yes. Of so course. Yes. 100%. Live your life like if. Right now, you got a chance to change whatever is happening right now because we have that power right now. So I could mm-hmm. have not done the big party for my daughter. I could have not gotten her the car. I could have gone the other route. But I'm pretty much seeing this moment as if it was going to pass. And sometime, someday I'm just going to remember it. So every single day, yeah. I live every day with me and my family and my friends as if it was a memory that I'm making for my future self. Got it. So you're you're purposely trying to create memories for your future self. Because one day your memories are going to pop up on your phone. You do it a lot. Yeah, your memories are going to pop up on your phone, mm-hmm. and if most of them are amazing. And that that's your life. Like oh, your life was just amazing. 
Mm-hmm. So I guess I mean, where did you get this concept from? Because uh, I mean, if you look back at when your kids were born, like I wish I could go back. Mm-hmm. I wish I could, could do some things different. Uh, I don't want ten years to pass and have that same regret where oh, I should have done this different. So right now, every day I see it as if I'm coming back to this moment that already passed and doing it the best I can. Mm-hmm. Where did you learn this from, though, or did you just come up with this on yourself? I just, I just came up with it. Just, I mean, the moment I saw the kids getting bigger, I think that's when it happened. That's when it hit me. When I saw them growing up, when I saw them be more independent, when they no longer needed me as much, I'm like, oh my god, okay, I gotta something just something woke up in me and i was like okay i need to i need to do as much as i can right now because this is going to pass anyways and then they're going to remember back oh mm-hmm. it was great or it wasn't great and also just the mortality self-mortality awareness like you have some friends pass away family members pass away you're like when am i what what's keeping me here you know like my friends pass over dumb shit like why am i here and so mm-hmm. that sticks with you and it makes you just want to live your life to the fullest. I mean, as much as you can. Yeah, I think, uh, and I know people may listen to this and they're not going to get it unless they watch your Instagram or watch you, your story, because even you probably don't get it because you're so used to it. But me yeah. watching you go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, sometimes I'm trying to figure my own stuff out. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I like I've seen you go to Puerto Rico, right? I'm from Puerto oh, Rico. I love Puerto Rico. Like, I should go. Yeah, I should go to Puerto Rico more than you. My family, my history, my culture, everything's there. I see you bouncing from Puerto Rico to Bali to England to freaking Jamaica. Like I see you all over the place. Mexico, California. You're just like boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, man, how is he doing it? Not financially, but like mentally because like for me i'm like oh i gotta prepare i gotta i gotta book three months out and then i gotta make sure i handle all my work and then once i handle all my work i'll try to squeeze in a, a quick vacation where you're just like yeah, back and to it, back it's just the same thing it goes back to the same thing um we're living in the past like you're not gonna remember the tiredness you're not gonna remember the trip you're not gonna remember the flight you're only gonna remember the moments so we try to squeeze in as many moments as we can. So that way, you know, we look back and like, oh, my God, that was a great, great, great life that we had. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be in our deathbed and nobody's going to say, oh, good job. You have all this money. They're going to say they're going to play a real. They could literally play a real of your whole entire life. And you'd go a happy man or a mm-hmm. sad fucking man. So it's up to you. Like they're going to be playing mm-hmm. a real of your whole life in front of you. You know, like, are you going to go yeah. with a smile? Are you going to go like this? Fuck yeah. Or are you going to go with, fuck, I didn't do yeah. shit. God damn it, that fucking sucks. Yeah. There's no round two. Like, oh, I'll, I'll get him later. There's no fucking getting later. you like, we're getting fucking older. Like, sooner or later, your little fire ends. And now you're just another dude that could have done something but didn't. Yeah, I guess... Uh... Super, super interesting. I think I'm going to start trying to think about that. Like, am I living in the past? Um, Dude. Because I've always been, like I said, a planner. I'm like a planner type of person. Look, look, d- trick yourself into into thinking like that, man. You have you have kids, right? You have, you have, you have a kid, daughter. Yeah, th- yeah three kids. Go out three into kids. a living, Two sons, living room. Daughter. Go out into a living room and say to yourself, oh, shit, I just came back for this moment right now from the future. Wouldn't you hug them extra hard? Wouldn't you praise them a little bit more? Wouldn't you mm-hmm. like see them with a whole new happiness? Because that eventually that is going to be the past. Mm-hmm. You know, but by seeing it yeah. like that, I think that's huge. By seeing mm-hmm. it like that, you're gonna they're gonna feel you more like, oh my god, what's wrong with dad? Well, he just time traveled back in time to give you a hug. Mm-hmm. And I think a I lot of people I might, live I might be, I might in be the crazy, future. but I just but that's just how I live it. No, I think that's, like I said, like, I don't think people would understand unless they watched you. They have to watch it to <laughs> to understand because it's, it's a different lifestyle. Ryan, you know, Ryan Pineda, he's like that too. Like this guy goes on vacation every month, every other month. He goes golfing 
every Friday. And I'm like, bro, how do you go golfing? Like there's so much going on, but he really likes uh-huh. golfing. Yeah. Like he, he, he really likes it. So he makes sure to spend the time doing yeah. stuff that he likes. So now I think I need to transition to that, I guess. So last couple parts I want to touch on. Um, do you have a partner? Do you have a business partner? Um, yeah, my brother, my brother Rodrigo is the one that handles most of the operational, operational stuff. Okay, so let's let's touch on partnerships before we wrap this up. So, what has made you and your brother Rodrigo such a successful partnership? Uh, we used to play in a band since we were twelve, and so we were always together working on things, trying to make it. Uh, and so it was just mm-hmm. our dream was to someday work together. And so real estate allowed us to do that. Even my cousin used to play in the band. He's working here with us. So it's like we just transitioned the whole band into real estate. And now we get to hang out every day. And like, dude, it's fucking amazing. Like we hang out. We help each other out. Like it's not even about the money for us. It's about helping each other out, you know, achieve whatever it is they need. Yeah, but like logistically, like what does he do? What do you do? How do you keep each other accountable? How do you know? How do you? Like, what if he's doing something bad? Do you say, hey, you're messing up or like, yeah, how does that work? So, I mean, it's all well separated. I mean, we have a we have a transaction coordinator, which is my sister. She handles all the finances, wires, this and that, looks into all the accounts, payroll. Uh, he handles operational, you know, like the 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 blasting of the deals, uh, the more advanced data, dealing with uh, Zen call, dealing with, mm-hmm. you know, the realtor relationships, lender relationships. Uh, ensuring that we're we're getting deals in from the dispo team. I handle more of the acquisition side, the acquisition side, and the growth, the strategy, the vision. Who are we? The 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 brand, like you're saying as well. Um, and I decide whether mm-hmm. we step on it or we slow it down, depending on what we're seeing. You're more like visionary type. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. And then I guess like. Two more questions. So what advice would you give someone that's just starting off in real estate right now coming into this market? Uh, right now, uh, I would suggest that you have your expectations as realistic as possible. Because you might watch somebody like me, somebody like you, somebody's doing it that has gotten some traction and think, oh, I'm going to get there quick. Mm-hmm. Well, while you might be entering in the time right now where it's fucking Armageddon. All right. And then it might take you longer right now because of all the shit that's going on where before people going into the business were getting rewarded as if they were fucking geniuses right now you're coming into a time yeah. where it's more difficult so just have proper expectations hey it's going to take a little bit longer ramon said uh so just kind of roll with it and if you if you love the journey then you, you'll be just fine some people don't like the journey and but they just want the results but for me i love the journey i love getting up and going to fight every day so it wasn't even about the, getting the mm-hmm. stuff it was more about getting up and getting an opportunity to go after the stuff. Got it. Okay. And then what advice would you give? Cause I've been this person, maybe you make a hundred K, but you're just like, damn, like why am I only making a hundred and everyone else is making seven figures growing into these big people. And I feel stuck. What, what advice would you give that? Person? Um, it's not all what it seems like. All right. You might see somebody and say, Oh, they made it. The, a lot of people are capping. There's a lot of people that don't have any fucking money, but they look like they do. Um, so just, you know, like mm-hmm. not everything that you see that, you know, that shine is gold. So just remember that you just, it's you against you and your story of your life. Don't try to compete or race against somebody else. in this, the story of the race of their life, because then that's, you're just going to be fucking mm-hmm. miserable. If it's you and every day you get a little bit better, then, hey, be happy, you know, that, that you get a chance to try. Some people don't have that that chance. Um, but, yeah, I think comparison is probably the, the worst thing you could do. It's very easy to look at somebody else and say, oh, they're doing so much better. My life's, my life sucks. But it doesn't suck when you look at somebody else's life. You know, like, it works both ways. Mm-hmm. But what, what, would, what advice would you give them if, let's just say they're not comparing, but they just want to grow. But they're not growing. They've stuck at. What a decent living. Yeah. Uh, hey, that that might be all that the market's allowing right now. Uh, you could tr- you could always try new things. You know, try new marketing, try new new thing. I mean, if you, if you haven't grown more, because maybe that's the, as much as that strategy does. Would I've gone to six million by just doing one strategy? Fuck no, I wouldn't have made that. So you add another strategy, and maybe the other strategy starts working, and another strategy, and that's how you get to the bigger amounts. Is six million a lot? 
it is for somebody that never had anything, but for somebody that's doing a hundred million, it's fucking nothing, right? So you just have to be happy with yeah. where you're at. I mean, I, I used to be happy with five thousand a month, you know. So it's not mm-hmm. just do as much as you can, as much as the market will, will allow. Try everything. Try every marketing strategy. You might hit one that actually works for you, um, but until you do that, then I mean, there's really, you know, nothing you could do. But always write down all the things that you could possibly do. Networking. And see which one of those you could grow more in, and then just keep keep adding on top of it. Beautiful. All right, and then um, I know you're you're in Arizona, so if somebody wants to reach out to you, if they want to sell you a deal, if they want to raise some capital with you, how do they reach out to you? And where are you doing deals? Uh, Instagram is probably the best place. Wholesale sharks, wholesale sharks on Instagram. That's probably the best spot to connect with for sure. Hmm. And where do you are, are you in Phoenix or what what part of yeah. Arizona are you doing deals in? Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Perfect. Okay. Well, um, this is going to be coming out in a couple of weeks. If you're still listening to this, I appreciate you. Um, also, I want to give everyone a reminder: we're having a future flipper event, September 26th through the 28th. Alex Hermosi, Layla Hermosi are going to be speaking. Ramon, are I'm you going, coming? I'm going. Let's go, baby. So go to futureflipper.com. If you're in, if you're, if you want to go to Ramones, uh, it's in Arizona, September 29th. Um, and thank you so much for listening. We are out. Peace.